Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. On today's feature, we're sitting down with Thomas Codavilla, who is at SKS Legal, and he's gonna dive into a little bit about privacy policies and how to go about navigating them for productivity software. The main reason I wanted to talk to you guys about this is because it's something that constantly comes up in emails. How do I navigate a privacy policy to best understand it before I use an application? Because privacy is quite important. So being able to understand, you know, what the good things and the bad things are about a policy, what makes a good policy, and how to go about finding out all of what this means. Hopefully, Thomas will be able to answer your questions today. Now, just a legal disclaimer, this is actually just generalized advice. Thomas is giving up his own free time, so I just wanted to thank him up front and say uh, I'm very excited for this feature. But just remember, privacy and your own security is your own information. This is only advice, so do not take it as the gospel. Anyway, guys, without further ado, let's dive into the chat with Thomas Codavilla. Yeah, I'm Tom Codavilla. I'm a partner at SKNS. Uh, we're a full service small business law firm. Uh, I specialize in data privacy and security. Uh, I used to be general counsel at Sphero, which is a robotic toy company. We've got um, distribution all over the world, uh, did a lot of GDPR stuff. So yeah, I started uh, my own practice and um, do a lot of work with privacy policies and uh, really enjoy the opportunity to get to talk with you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I think it's gonna help a lot of people, um, 100%. And, and we were just chatting before about the sort of scariness of of, of uh, starting up and all that. Um, obviously, how how long you've been rolling now? Just about three months. Oh, um, the itself is, I think, six months old. Um, so yeah, just getting started. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's obviously something that's really a, a very important space right now, especially um, you know all those new keywords, GDPR and et cetera, et cetera. I think they're coming out of the woodwork and. And people are starting to understand their data, well, trying to understand their data policies a bit more. So um, I think the first question uh, for you is, when a, people sort of struggle to understand the, the policies uh, a lot of time, what advice do you give to those people starting from the basics? Uh, when, you know, when they land on that privacy policy page, what should they first look out for? Yeah, I think that if it seems hard, it's because it is, because most privacy policies are written in a really obscure style. Uh, originally, a privacy policy was written by a company so that they could do pretty much whatever they wanted with your information and um, not really have to be accountable for it. That shifted. Um, new style privacy policies, what you should be looking for is a way to draw a straight line from the information specifically a specific piece of information that the company collects to what they do with it, who they share it with, how long they store it for, how long it's secured, uh, and the like. So the first thing you should realize, I guess, is that it shouldn't be hard. If you find yourself having to go, well, what does that word mean? And I'm not sure what this category of data is used for, then that's a good indication that the company that you're dealing with probably doesn't take your privacy seriously or is doing something that they would rather not talk about in the open. Um, not, to, not to spread conspiracy theories, uh, <laughs> but that's sort of the first thing I look at when I look at a privacy policy is, all right, do these people care enough to explain in plain English what they're doing? Yeah, and now I guess that's important because we don't know all the, like as the average user, you don't know all of the key terms, the information, you just want to go in it to be, you know, readable for the, the in layman's terms, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just think straight lines. So if you have a question about, for example, with productivity software, um, is a human reading my content, whatever that is, maybe it's just my calendar, maybe it's you know, to-do lists. Um, but if you can't figure that out from reading the privacy policy, uh, you know, that matters. You got a problem there. And a good privacy policy will tell you that. They'll yeah, anticipate the questions that the user has. Yeah, you shouldn't have to ask those questions in the first place. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, lawyers don't think like consumers most of the time. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to, like, um, big red flags, when you're looking for a privacy policy, um, and maybe it's written in fairly simple terms or, roughly enough for you to understand 
but you 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 find a few things what what are the things that you should be deterred by i think um Actually, there's a, a software called Newton. Um, and I, I took a look at their privacy policy and it's got an old school privacy policy. Uh, what it does is it says, we collect this information, um, but that it doesn't say what it does with each piece of information. It, it simply says, the privacy policy says, we use your information generally to do all of these things. So you have no idea if they're using your email address to, to do all these things, if they're reading your content. So that's a red flag for me because I can't figure out what they're doing with my data. Um, and it's written in such a way that gives them the ability to say, yeah, we told you we did this with your information. So that's a red flag. Um, I, just because I'm a lawyer and I'm a bit of a pedant, uh, <laughs> the typos and things like that, if there's no contact information, um, in the privacy policy. Um, if the privacy policy is extremely long and not broken up or well organized, that's another red flag. Um, if they're in the EU and they don't mention GDPR or um, third party uh, service providers or things like that, if they don't disclose who they use um, as third party service providers, um, that's a red flag for me. Um, if they don't talk about cookies or targeted advertising, if you can't figure out whether what you give to the service is going to be used to serve you ads later, that's a red flag for me. Um, and those are the big ones. It obviously depends on um, the company and the, the kind of software. That's it. And and in those sort of like, when you're looking through that as well, should, because um, obviously there's a couple of accredited uh, privacy organizations out there. They're different to wherever you were, uh, wherever you are in the world. But should you be looking out for those sort of organizations that support the privacy policy? Yeah. If, uh, if somebody at least makes the effort to get certified or if, uh, for example, in the U.S., uh, we have something called Privacy Shield. And if you're going to transfer data from the EU to the U.S., Privacy Shield is one of the ways that you can legally do it and still be in compliance with European privacy law. So if a company has taken the time to try to get registered under Privacy Shield, um, that's a great sign. Um, I am wary of people who put accolades by their privacy policy. I, sometimes I think, what are you trying to hide here? Um, it's like arguing from authority. It doesn't create a great impression. Uh, but generally, you know, you've got some really serious privacy organizations out there. Like uh, for kids' data, there's a student data privacy pledge um, that you can take. Um, and so, yeah, it definitely classes up a privacy policy if, uh, if people are involved and, and know what they're doing and know that they're subject to these laws. Yeah. That's a yeah, it's really good advice. And um, on the sort of topic of like, sometimes in the productivity software space, you see like a couple of apps that uh, are involved uh, with you know they have a couple of apps like you know calendar app, a to do list app, a, you know all those sorts. But they're involved in a suite of apps. Um, should you be looking out for whether they share data between those applications, even if you're not using the other service? You should look out for that if it matters to you, but generally if a company has access to your data, it's pretty well assumed that they're going to use it to improve all of their products and services because you can't very well say, all right, we have product, we have a calendar product here. We're not going to use anything that we learn there to improve our email product over here. Um, <clears throat> it would be, it would have to be a special circumstance for a company to say, no, this, the data we have here is completely siloed off from the rest of the company because as a practical matter in a company, that just doesn't happen. You know, yeah. The same person who's running software development for one um, area of the business you know, is maybe the same person or like talks to the other person who develops the other application. So um, yeah. that's not a huge red flag for me. Okay, and um, and from some of the the, the services I, I mentioned to you, uh, I sent uh, Thomas a few uh, some random services, uh, software services that are in the productivity space. Did any of them come up with red flags or things that should be noted? Yeah, um, so you sent me Newton, Todoist, Notion, and Evernote. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Newton's privacy policy was pretty bad. 
Um, it was kind of, it was old school. It was uh, relatively comprehensive, but I wouldn't know if they're reading anything that I give them or what they're doing with it based on um, my reading of the privacy policy. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to come down on Newton, obviously. I'm sure they're a fine company. Um, <laughs> but it's a bit obscure, you know. I, I'd like to know whether the content of my emails is being used, uh, shared with third parties, analyzed. I, I would have to assume it is. Um, probably part of the business model, but I don't know. Um, Todoist, I, I really liked their privacy policy, actually. Um, it's plain English, super short. Here's what we collect. Here's what we do with each separate piece of data that we collect from you. Um, here's what we don't do. So it actually looked really good. Um, people love short declarative privacy policies, makes them feel safe. Uh, yeah. The only thing left to do there is uh, hope that it's true. Um, Notion is pretty good. Uh, they're doing things right. They know that they're subject to the GDPR. Um, it, it's better than Newton. The organization of their privacy policy wasn't great, but I could still pretty much tell what they're doing with everything they collect. Um, and then Evernote was a, it's a unique format that they use. It's more of a question and answer format. Um, but they anticipated the user's questions. Evernote straight up has a section where it's a, it answers the question, do you read my content? Does a person read my content? Yeah. Uh, and so that might make you feel good. The, the one caveat there is, do you care whether a robot or a person reads your content? if it's still being used to serve you advertisements. Hmm. I personally don't. Um, I don't, you know, if, if you're monetizing me and I would prefer not to be monetized, um, I don't care how you do it. Um, but some people do care because I think people find some comfort in knowing that a person isn't looking at their personal details and maybe a, a system is just picking out key terms and then using it to match them with an ad. Um, but that's something to think about, but you know, at least Evernote gives you the ability to, to have that, um, conversation with yourself. Brilliant. That was like getting like a DNA test back there, like seeing the results, <laughs> <laughs> understanding what, um, what, what some of the softwares are good. Cause like from a, I'm, I would say I'm more of a used perspective looking at these is you only get like a few red flags, you know, from some of the terminologies, but that's really it. So that was, I think that was really helpful for everyone, um, especially those users out there who are fairly clueless on privacy policies. So um, thanks so much for coming on, Thomas. Um, where can everyone find you after uh, this video call? Oh, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so we're online at sknslegal.com. Um, if you have questions about privacy policies, you just want to connect, uh, my email is codevilla, uh, C-O-D-E-V-I-L-L-A, at sknslegal.com. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to hear from you because uh, you, a lot of your listeners are, uh, or um, subscribers are probably um, either in small businesses or interested in privacy, and those are people I like to get to know because um, I love this stuff. Uh, Lovely. It'll be a fun next couple of years with all these new laws coming into effect. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's going to be a big space. Um, and, and I, uh, I definitely, you know, when we first chatted last week, I definitely made sure, uh, in the introduction, I pronounced your name. Cordavilla. It was, uh, Cordavilla. <laughs> it was very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, two, uh, two guys who were Italian and don't necessarily look Italian. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Wear glasses as well. <laughs> Love it. Thanks so much, Thomas, for coming on. And, um, I really look forward to the comments and everyone getting savvy about privacy policies. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, Francesco. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah, I wish I'd mentioned, I just thought of something like, a privacy policy can say whatever it wants, but if you start seeing ads based on things you've talked about, yeah, they're tracking you. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it's like pay attention if something shows up and the only way somebody would know that you were thinking about buying a boat or something would be that yeah. you put it in your calendar you know that's, it. Yeah. that's scary stuff that's general awareness stuff so you know um yeah that's more like how you can tell that a company's doing something and maybe shouldn't be doing yeah. uh, <clears throat> maybe that's another red flag but oh uh, i'll put that in the sort of kicker that just okay. like that you just did there yeah, I get that sometimes in Messenger. I mean, that's an obvious one, isn't it? But yeah, mm -hmm. 
yeah, if it's a specific productivity software, yeah. That's really useful. Lovely. Yeah.